Hello and welcome to another episode of the After the Whistle podcast. Today it's me, Smiley, doing the hosting because um, ECG said they're not going to make KO come join with today. ECG too said they're not going to produce shadow for the load shedding. So, how are we going to do them? But yeah, so join. <laughs> so we should make we print on our own schedule. It'll be anything. We go do them. So yeah, joined by Corey, Crack, and the star boy himself, Kawa, once again. Two episodes in a row, we have Kawa. Like this one, yeah, we, we've been very lucky for the past two weeks. So Charlie, Kawa, what's up? Hello, dear, what's up? Charlie, we didn't say African games just ended. I mean, uh, Charlie, we... the African games finished. I six more, but I'm back. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, Charlie. Why the game stress you out? Overworked. Overworked. Back to back, back to back work. Uh, stay up at night, wake up early, and then oh. travel to Botteman, go to Bukom, <laughs> in some way. Charlie. It's advantages but, yeah. of having all the centers scattered all over the place. Like if Bro, it was centralized, you know, the, you know, say the Friday evening, mm-hmm. a day leg on, we are left go across Post Stadium, we are left go Bukom. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Your man texts me oh. say the camera thing say the joke. Wow. Because because then then I forgot because it was a final day, I had to go and supervise the the reporters we had sent to the different centers. So then wow. Charlie, I make what? Wow. Charlie, we will get into one, um, but Charlie, Corey, what's up? Right now disclaimer, Corey they use Starlink right now. So Ah, fresh. In, in, I'm sure fresh. when the video comes out, because it's <laughs> a video be crisp. There's a one day of Starlink right now. I don't know what I have to talk this because there's still no legalizer. There's no license for here. So I don't know what I have to talk about. I'm on something called Link. You know me. You know me. You know me. You know, I'm on something called Link. I don't know what you're talking about. Before <laughs> Slack will say, people come here. I mean, I don't what know. I mean. <laughs> anyway, Charlie, crack. What's up? Well, I'm good, Charlie. I did. Nice to be back. I miss a couple uh, of episodes. Yeah, you miss Pan. Yeah, 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 I miss Pan. They say, maybe they talk. So you know, we talk. Oh no, I mean, you know why they had to do with some personal as well. So, yeah, they come in a way, but I'm back. I'm back. Eesh. Nice one, nice I stay one. inside. But they did the bomb because the way Corinne, this one be crisp way, my own, they look like some, <laughs> <laughs> some get, ghetto youth. <laughs> some ghetto youth here recording, they vex me. <laughs> you will see, you will so see after the recording. It, it don't go be ghetto any youth here recording. <laughs> 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 anyway, when we start, like I was saying, we have to start with the African Games. It just ended on Saturday, which was the closing ceremony. All in all, um, on the sporting side, we managed to um, rack up a few positives. And I'm sure Kawa will be able to break down those positives for us and how the general feel of everything is after the Games. So Kawa. Okay, so um, uh, first of all, Charlie, good to be back. And the African Games was really, really hectic, Charlie. Uh, a lot of sports they were me. I never see some before. They say something, something they, they call something pickleball. I don't know what they do for that, but I for watch. <laughs> <laughs> we um, uh, something like handball. I hadn't watched handball since secondary school. So same, this same. Is like yeah, this is like the first time I did watch handball and on a global scale mm-hmm. and um sports like volley, beach volley, all of that. But I think that I mean, um what's what's is stick out for me the most be say Ghana be really talented country because there were so many, so many talented people. I mean the 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 hockey the volleyball, the volleyball really surprised me. And knowing that our coach even had tactics and used a certain tactic to actually beat Nigeria to qualify for the semis. Or the, like, because with the semis, eh, then we did lead Nigeria by one set. And within that set, I think we were on 24 and 25 ends the game. So we we're on 24 and then we kept making fouls and, you know, playing in a way that we, we kind of like we we're giving the we we're giving the game away to the Nigerians. So when the Nigerians got to twenty one, then our coach called for a timeout. So he called for a timeout. The Nigerians were really really excited because they were on a really good streak. I think they had made about seven points, um, seven points all through 
you know, there were no faults. They were they were just beating us, and then seven points to get to twenty one. So they knew that they had the game. So this guy calls the the timeouts, and then when we came back in, we were supposed to serve. So we serve, and then the Nigerians hit, and then one of the guys hit a really low ball, and then the Nigerians thought they had a a spike. So the guy hit it with all his force, and then he went out, and then we win. And it was strange for me because I'm thinking like this is like some Mourinho move where like the guy just pull out for a game like volley inside. So I was really excited about that. And um, I think that generally um, the games ended quite well. It didn't start well, but it ended well. And and I just want to say that the Athletics Association did us really proud. And also the criticism from every one of you, everybody listening, all those on Twitter, trust me, they were reading your tweets. They were reading your tweets. The podium changed. A lot, the, look, the podium changed. And even with the athletics, they changed the podium twice at the athletics because they realized that the first one they were using, you know, it, it wasn't up to standard small. But it, it was nice, but it wasn't top notch. They changed it and brought a far better one. So they were reading your tweets. So don't think that anything you tweet is for granted. Charlie, then they read. They know what is happening. Oh, so, yeah, yes. Tweet. Um, yeah. So they, 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 ended, they ended really, really well. And also, thanks to everybody who come to the stadium. Um, what I want to say is that I think that with the attendance at these games, this is like the first time since 1973 that we've recorded really, really large numbers at, at African games like this, because um, usually with African games, you know, they get full stadium crowds like we got um, in Accra. The last time, the 1973 one was in Lagos, and you know how Lagos is. I mean, they always patronize anything. So so they went in their numbers. But after that, the, the numbers dwindled. Cairo 91 wasn't too much. There was Abuja in 2003. There weren't too many people. Uh, Maputo in 2011, Brazzaville in 2015. And even Rabat didn't have too many people as they, they did in Accra. And with some of the venues like Bukom, like um, the Accra Sports Stadium, what we saw in Cape Coast and what we saw in Legon, I think that we we sold out a lot of the centers that we, we played in. And it was a really, really good feeling. I mean, when I spoke to some of the officials of the Athletics Association who came, like some of the international officials, um, they were stating that uh, the way we've patronized the athletics, it, it, it has given them, um, it has given them some encouragement to know that there are a lot of other African countries who could also buy into the culture of watching athletics like we did over here. So that is also one of the one of the top pointers. But I just want to also say that um, with the disciplines where we won, I mean, we won two gold medals in football, which is which is great. I don't think that any of us would think that we don't deserve a gold medal in football. We actually do. In boxing, this is the first time since 1991 that we've won a gold medal. And we didn't win just one gold medal. We won four. So that is a marked improvement on that. And also, um, we won three gold medals in track and field, uh, one silver medal, and then one bronze medal, I think. Yes. So that is also another improvement of last uh, four years where we won just one gold medal and then one bronze medal. So that's, that's also another plus for, uh, for Ghana. Also, another thing that I want to point out is that um, we won medals in Taekwondo, which, which was surprising to me because, I mean, I didn't think we were good at it, but we won medals in Taekwondo. And then the famous one, the one that brought us the most medals, arm wrestling. We won 41 medals in arm wrestling. Oh, and the, the, thing <laughs> way, the thing where people don't know, we say, with the arm wrestling, eh, a, lot of, a lot of technicalities do. Now, arm wrestling, you go into it with your, right, uh, with your right hand. So if you win your right hand bout, you get a medal. So if you win the right hand and you've won, you get a gold. If you do it with your left hand and you win, you get another gold. You understand? Yeah. So it is, yeah. So it's, it is, it is both hands are, 
each then arm. Then I did wonder. Because me, I was, exactly. I was seriously it's wondering so... why arm wrestling alone gets over 40 medals for us alone to get 41. Like, I yeah, didn't wonder how important is arm wrestling for it to alone to have so many medals. And, but like, and, and also, another thing about the arm wrestling is that the countries that competed in arm wrestling were just about 11 or 12. So it was mostly ghana and egypt that were making it into the final <laughs> you know so it was just ghana egypt ghana egypt so at some point it was even boring because when when the mm. people were there and then they say oh this guy and this guy are qualified to the final then they'll say and now it's ghanaian and everybody say egypt, egypt. And, you know you just know that it's ghana and egypt in the final so yeah but i think that that also brought us uh quite a number of medals and it was really really i mean i was surprised I thought that I knew that arm wrestling was going to win us medals, but 41 was quite a stretch for me. The last thing I want to touch on is that we won 68 medals in Accra. The last time we won the most medals was in Lagos in 1973, where we won 27. So this is wow. the best ever we've That's done. That's a big jump. That's yeah, a big this jump. This is the best ever we've done in the African Games uh, since it big began. Ups. And and it is no doubt that we had to do it here in Ghana. And, you know, so Accra 2023 has given us the best ever medal haul we've had um, since the African Games began. And also, not forgetting the two swimming medals that Abeku Jackson won. Um, I think that he is one of the standout athletes for me at this African Games. Abeku Jackson, the guy who did the high jump, uh, Kadman Yamwa. Bro? And then, yeah, that guy. And then um, there was another swimmer called Harry Stacy, And for me, um, and, I, and I always choose Harry Stacy because this was his first ever African Games, his first ever time representing Ghana, and he made it to five finals. Only that every time he got into the final, he just couldn't make it past, or he just couldn't get into the podium. But he made it to five finals, and he was fought three times. So he was so close uh, in each time in the swimming. He's almost there. And yeah, he's, he's really almost there. And he's only 21 years old. So there's a chance for him to come back and then do better with the swimming. So hopefully, the thing about swimming also is that we are getting two wild cards for the Olympic Games this year. So what I'm hoping for is that Abeku Jackson can actually qualify um, with, the, with the qualification time for the Olympics so that the other wild card can go to Harry Stacey who could actually be Ghana's surprise package at the Olympic Games. So that's that's really just about it. I think that from the early stages where there was there were so much negatives and a lot of things were not going right, they picked up properly and then, you know, the last week was really, really excellent. I mean, for me, I still I I, I I'm very happy that in the end everything went well, but most of the positives came from the athletes. So me, I like how you focus yeah. on the athletes because for yeah. me, I think even to the end, there were probably still some uh, negative things happening, but it was oh, yeah, just there, being there, were, there were a lot. Yeah, there were a lot. Exactly. There were, there were a lot. I mean, um, <laughs> there, were, there were a few things that, you know, particularly did not go well, especially with, the, um, with I mean, for instance, the basketball, um, the day before the basketball was when they were doing the setup and everything, which was like, you know, and a lot of that. But I, I think that off the top of my mind, like I said, I said yesterday on, on the radio show that I feel like generally when they accepted to host the games, the major thing on their minds was athletics. And that's why they got the athletics right. You know, the other things, they felt like, oh, maybe we can manage with so-and-so or we can manage with that. So they didn't put too much premium on, on those sports, es especially with something like cycling, for instance. I think that with the cycling, they could have done way, way better than they did. You understand? But everybody was just fixated on athletics and, oh, 100 meters. And that's why the stadium was really good. And funny thing is that there was a coach who came from Canada to try to scout young um, African athletes from the African Games. And he was telling me that the last world championship that they had in the United States, in Eugene, Oregon, they didn't have a warm-up track. So it was just the main stadium tracks. And then the athletes were in the, in the, in the games village just training and then they come and run. So there wasn't particularly like a warm-up track. So for the, the University of Ghana to have a warm-up track, warm -up then track. the warm-up track has everything. It has the staple chase um, uh, hurdles. It mm -hmm. has the the discus throw nets, the hammer throw, it has almost everything. 
So if you're on the warm-up track, you can literally do all the training and everything you do before you come onto the main track. And it's not it's not really far from the main stadium. So um, when the athletes are moving from there to the main stadium, it's actually quite easy to come in and, and then perform. So the, the Canadian guy was saying that, I mean, kudos on that front for how we were able to put up the warm-up track and also put up a main stadium and, and the close proximity of the two of them. So um, I think that with the athletics, it was properly planned because that was what was at the back of everybody's head that, oh, when we are talking about games, it's athletics. And so I feel like maybe then we have to do a bit more sensitization on how other games are done. You know, for instance, the badminton, the tennis, the tennis was also excellent because we already had the tennis courts and we had never used it. So it was fresh and it was nice. But with stuff like the table tennis, where we had to find a place to set up and badminton, where we also had to set up and all of that, those were the places where we were finding trouble because, you know, I'm not sure they particularly thought about some of these things to make their changes as fast as they should have. And so, yeah, those were the problems. But generally, I think that the athletics just came in to save every bad thing that, you know, had happened in the beginning. Yeah. I'm very happy about the whole... And the thing about them reading all the feedback and things, because for me, I think it's very important to focus on the negatives because that's the only way to go. For example, you. if you look at the 2022 Champions League final, as of now, they're still, it's still undergoing litigation because of what happened before the game started. When the Liverpool fans and Real Madrid fans, there was trouble with the ticketing and a little stampede and all of those things. It's still undergoing litigation. So they will not come and tell us that, okay, yes, but after the initial trouble, the game went well, and after the game ended, everything went well. They'll focus on the negatives until they completely eradicate that thing. Yep. So for yep. me, it is very important to highlight those things until yeah. it completely goes away. Yeah. Because in the we need, end... We need to, yeah, we need to get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need, yeah, to, we get need to get it right. Because, like, because the thing is that, be I mean, also in May... In May, they are going to do the West African Athletics uh, Athletics Competition here, and so we need to get oh. it right from now before so one all come. of these things come. Another one is coming back in May, because okay. I mean everybody is everybody is happy about the facility that's yeah. there. I mean the the tracks the tracks are world class. The I mean the the Lagos Stadium is actually quite you know like a a world athletics standard stadium for athletics events, and so now that it's here, I think that there will be a few more. Uh, athletics meets over the next few years. So, yeah. Crack, do you have anything to say about your boy, Samuel Tichi? <laughs> <laughs> My boy, Rim Warrior. <laughs> I mean, what I want to highlight is also what Kawawa said. We are naturally talented. Ghanaians are naturally talented. We might not have the numbers like other countries like Nigeria and things, where you know where you have a larger pool, you can get a larger talent base and everything. But with the small we have, we have quality. That is why it hurts me that we are being treated the way we are being treated. That's why it hurts me that the effort in promoting and pushing our talents is not there. Because trust me, there is a reason why people will still see Ghana as a star of Africa and especially West Africa. There's something people see that we, we are here, we might not see. But as you grow older, you understand why people value Ghana Rati, as a nation. Not, not to cut you here, but a lot of the foreign athletes who came here kept saying the same things. Like, they were all so happy. And I, I was always wondering, like, <laughs> what are you really happy about? <laughs> you know, like, they were, they were, they were all so happy, es especially, the, especially the South Africans. Like, you know, they'll see you and they're like, oh, where can we go and see the Kwame Kuma uh, Museum and, and, and the Ethiopians? And I'm like, you guys need and, to calm and down. And we Tell see it. their country as holiday destination. <laughs> like, we bro, see their country bro. as holiday destination. Like, so so for, for the first fight, for the first fight, I happened to sit at where the accredited people, accredited people were. So I sat with some of the South Africans. I sat with some of like the, the athletes, the boxers and everything. And I was... What Carl was saying, I was chatting with them. They were telling me about their experience so far. Like, you know that thing where when you travel to another country, you hardly focus on the negatives because you're happy you are there. And you are in a country where right now people know about Ghana and people respect Ghana from the outside. 
So we that we are here, I mean, I didn't shit on Ghana. I was actually praising Ghana because it was an opportunity as well to promote, I mean, our nation in the way we could do because they were happy and I didn't want to be a Debbie Downer. You understand? So we spoke with them, told them why we are here, some more teaching. And they had glowing remarks on our boxes and things. Like, strangely enough, they were like, when they see them, like, they have this fear factor in them, even though they are not afraid of them, but you see the way they carry themselves, they have this confidence. I was like, because they are fighting in the land of in the in, in the land of boxes in Bukum. This is where boxing was best in Ghana. So where you are fighting, there's so much history. I it was an opportunity to educate them on Bukum, like some of the champions. You know, when you go in the Bukum arena, they've written most of our champions, their names around the arena. So you see I caught the, you see like DK Poison, you see Azuma Nelson. So I was telling them that look at the names over there. When you check their names across Africa, they've done things most Africans haven't done. So that's why Africa, when it comes to Africa and West Africa to be precise, they respect Ghana in the boxing scene because we've taken Africa further and higher than most. So it was it was a nice chit chat trying to, but the athletes did what they did in spite of preparation in spite of lack of attention but i don't want to go into details i mean because you have people that will just try to link me to my boy and all those things so i wouldn't want to do that for now but as kawa said their focus was on one side from where the boys were come in cape coast how they were being fed training and since it wasn't ideal but they were all determined to make it because Every, before every fight, I spent like an hour with Techi at where the boxes are resting. And I talked to Amadou. I talked to all of them, like Mohamed. I talked to all of them before the fight. I want to see where they are mentally are and all those things. And all of them were determined to win gold for themselves. Because they were like, Charlie, once we are here, forget whatever is happening to us. Forget what we are not getting. This is our time to shine for ourselves and the nation as well. And this is what, this is exactly, and this is why it hurts me that regardless, you have pride for your nation. Regardless of, see, you can complain about everything, eh, but once they play the Ghana national anthem, <laughs> see, I look, I felt it when they were doing the medal presentation and they were playing our national anthem. Like the way everybody stood up. Like people were sitting down. Anytime a Ghanaian was given, whether you were given bronze or silver, or you were even fourth, they were doing third place, but it was two third. Look, they stood up for everything. They sang their national anthem with passion because people love the sports. That's the bottom line. People love the sports. Buko people love the boxing. Like, Corey, I, I posted before the game where they were resting and things. You know, so. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I did an interview with I did an interview with Joy. I know they are never going to air it because if they air it, the sports minister will come for me. So they never air because look, that was the first day I got there and I saw my boy. I was like, mm. how are you? How are you actually expected to do your best when you are you you are literally not rested well before your match? Like it's it hurts. It hurts. Like we didn't have a good start, but we had a good finish. And it's all down to the athletes. I'm like, for I'm telling you for a fact, it's all down to the athletes and their external factors. Their family supporting them, people supporting them emotionally. Like, look, the crowd was amazing at Buko Marina. Forgot the ocean door and all those things. You were. <laughs> look, was the best part for me. They were they were literally putting fear into the other boxes. Who see when you are so coming in. <laughs> so, so I was so not. To, I was sitting with I was sitting with some Moroccan guys. I mean, they were they were the Moroccan officials, so the the technical guys and then the coaches and stuff. And every time a Ghanaian walks in, and the the deafening noise and everything, one of the Moroccan guys was like, "How do you guys expect us to win?" <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, well, this is just how it is. And you see, the DJ too doesn't care. The DJ just plays music. He's like, the fight could be going on and then the DJ starts playing music and everybody's dancing oh. and the referee's like, calm down, calm down. Like, nobody... It was just a party, you know? It was just a party. 
the referee, not even the referee, the, the commentator go like, DJ, DJ. That means that you stop. Oh. Then your mom enters the ball. Then you see the crowd. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Look, it, that was what I'm saying. That, like, see, yeah, it doesn't take a lot to impress Ghanaians. Like, too much is given, much is expected. If you are telling me you are spending this amount on a budget, make it worth it. Because Ghanaians like good things. So Ghanaians will support and praise you once it's good. It's as simple as that. Just do like see the first podium we saw. Are we trying to are we trying to say the sports ministry didn't see this? Like so they okay this. Yeah. Are you serious? Do you they know, don't right. have, see. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to cut you uh, just about that podium. We have all been to weddings. We have all been to <laughs> different events in Ghana. There are a million and one different event organizers. I know different vendors hmm. that do different things. That podium they put up at first was a complete disgrace and a complete and utter, <laughs> like they completely disregarded any level of standards worldwide. Like what was that? So I'm very happy that hmm. getting towards the end, it was improved. Bro, did we, like, my problem is, do we always have to complain before you do the right thing, when you budgeted for this? Like, do we have to? Like, you you people don't fear international shame or what? Like, what you were doing was, it was, it was appalling, it was abysmal. Like, why do we always have to scream and shout for you people to do the right thing? You understand, like, when you talk to the athletes, I mean, I was more at the boxing side, I, up to now, still, I'm sure, God willing, in me, when the Athletics, um, I'll go to Lincoln Stadium. I still haven't been there because of the distance yeah. and the traffic. So I just Same. stay at Buko and for my boy as well. You understand? So anytime a foreigner is going to fight a Ghanaian, eh, the Buko boys, bro, go back, go back. <laughs> they don't even know. And those those scream explicit things to them. Like, <laughs> see, the last fight, eh, some of the just fights, there was a guy sitting like behind me, eh, and you call Zambia, Zambia, kill. <laughs> and they were looking at one of the Zambia who are asking like what have we done and the guy said yeah, just a Zambia no <laughs> 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 before the fight like I said they will put fear of yeah. God in you look and before the fight Samo Amadou and all those things like one thing they were like look the North Africans are skilled, right? They are pretty, they are very skilled. I've watched most of the Moroccans, the Algerians. They are skilled. That's one thing. But they are no better than us. So the 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 guy Samotechi beat beat the African number one, right? He beat the African number one. So that's the guy Samo actually wanted because he saw it as as a chance to like show people that bro, I'm truly number one in that in the sixty three kg, right? But then, so when the guy lost, he was like, ah. It don't mean, like he pinned him say the the number one actually lost because he wanted him. So he was like, This guy, oh my ele. And all of them had the confidence because they were like, they are all and Zambians were really good in the boxing. Most they won, I think after, after Ghana, they won most of the medals, the like um the gold and this one. I might be wrong, but then I was there for most of them made it to the finals. You understand? We fought three Zambians in the finals. And we beat all of them. Because the boys were like, bro, if I be able to beat Algeria and beat Egypt, now you Zambi. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? And it was true when they showed it. Because the Zambians fight like us. But they are more like, they are not really tactical. They come with the energy. They are, they want to scrap with you. And if you try that thing with the Ghana boxers, they are good at that. Scrapping hey, and like... Isn't Derek, Derek Chisora is from Zambia, right? Yeah. It's right. it's right. oh, yeah. Okay. So that, I mean another thing we need to know is that the, the the Zambians are some of the most powerful boxers on the continent. So Zambia, DR Congo, Ghana, Nigeria um have always produced boxers. And I mean all the way back in the eighties, Zambia had a boxer called Albert Musankabala, who was like one yeah, of Musankabala. the top rated yeah, one of the top rated boxers in and he was like rubbing shoulders with Azuma Nelson and the rest in the 80s. But he just, his career just didn't shoot up as fast yeah. as, you know, the others. Yeah. But they have really good boxers. So they were good. So like, if I've been able to outmaneuver the skillful ones, you that are coming to fight like me, I will show you how to fight. And that's what the Ghanaians basically did. Because I was listening to them 
talk before the fight and what they said they would do they did it because they were like bro i am not going to let you walk me down in my nation and in the finals i'll walk you down and i will detect the pace and show you how to fight so most of the Ghanaian boxers were it even trying to outpoint them do that patapa no way they were really tactical which made me understand that like look with proper training and proper management with proper dieting and everything these boys are going to take us far because Ghana hasn't won a gold medal in the boxing world 50 something years right come on if I'm right the African games yeah the African game gold in boxing we, are, we hadn't won since 91 okay 91 that's like 30 yeah. 33 you understand 33 yeah. You understand? So they were like, they were like, bro, we wanted to do this. And they, and I was just happy that it was following. Only one person that, I mean, I don't want to talk about him like that. He was the only one that let the Ghana team down. But there's more room for improvement. <laughs> like, yeah, Banco and Tilapia, there's more room for improvement. <laughs> so I, I mean, but he was the only one. And I, I'm not going to lie. Ah, mm. Let me keep quiet. Anyways, so I just mm. think Look, the our leaders need to understand that taking the name of the nation is how you invest in these people and how they represent you. They need to really invest in the boys. They really need to put things together. Kawawa said, before the first boxing fight at Buku Marina, right now they have to remove the stage and refix it. Already, we're 30 minutes later. Already, they said the, the bout to start at 2 p.m. It didn't start at 2 p.m. As at 2.30, they were now fixing the ring. Again, imagine. No judges said the, the fight started around 4.35. Two hours, 30 minutes later, we were sitting there in the sun. There were so many poor things that went on. So that is why me, people trying to big up the sports minister and all those things. That's up to you. I would rather big up the LOC. Or what do they call them? The Olympic Committee. Uh, I said Olympic. The um, the local organizing committee. Lo- yes, the LOC. Uh, you understand? Uh, be careful. Be careful with that beginning up of the uh, uh, LOC. I had a different encounter with them. So I, I debate <laughs> what. Oh, big sorry, up. sorry. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> hey, <laughs> man. Down with that yeah, big up. I debate <laughs> who, uh, <laughs> The reason why I'm saying that is like the coaches are part of it, right? Well, Let's yeah, say the coaches, coaches are part fall, of what? the coaches fall under them. Oh, no, the mm-hmm. coaches are with the federations. Okay, I'll big up the yeah. coaches. I won't big up any LOCA federation. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. wrong. I'll big up the coaches because look, the coaches have they had personal relationship with the with the boxers and they treated them like their sons. That was really really important. They could go to them, talk to them. They were always with them. They never left their side. And I really want us to big up the coaches of, for all the athletes. They were really, really key and important because they, they they managed to block the noise from outside and make the boxers and athletes focus on what's important. Because, bro, if not, and the coaches go angry, held mic, the things they will say, Guy, it wouldn't it wouldn't have been nice. The the final day we really came in clutch, winning the football, winning like three out of the four boxing bouts, gold, and then I Both mean we won we won three we won three golds, one silver, in the boxing. That's good. I mean the Nigerian female boxers were really good. Nigerian female boxers were really good. They were really really good. I'm not gonna lie. They were really, really good. But um I mean still you had the Mor- uh, you had the Egyptian and the Moroccans, the North Africans still doing very well in the boxing bouts, the female division and things. But the male side, Nigeria had a couple of Ghana Ghana had um, I think Zambia too had gold in some of the bouts and, and it was it was really like it was really I don't think any good boxer should lose in Buko. Bro, the support they give you, the support they give you, like, it's, it's, it's really true that's the, that's the boxing capital because, see, I said, when an opponent is coming, that's the part I love. 
like oh yeah you know explicit like they will insult you and let you know that like they don't change it to english your mother if you like, talk and when <laughs> when their team is sitting down to the go like if like talk where you would do here before you... <laughs> so how do you lose ask our said how do you lose how do you lose so i mean i really want uh, the uh, gba the gba should really do good by our boxers because charlie the talent coming talent coming is is is, is wild it's pretty it's very Speaking wild of so. doing good by the boxes yeah. and the talents coming in and everything i want to ask our this one um what do you think can be done to consolidate the progress we've made with these games in terms of the infrastructure and also developing athletes moving forward because as we all know um the uk used the uk olympics in 2012 to like catapult themselves to another level in terms of world athletics and everything so what do you think needs to be done um i think that i think that right now what what, we, what needs to be done is that um we we we, sh- we should know where we've become really good at and i think that where we've become really good at is the sprints you understand and i'm going to talk about sprints for for just a short while before i move on um after benjamin azamati finished fit i saw a lot of people on twitter say oh he's over high blah 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 but then i keep telling people that azamati is the reason why you are in love with sprints again because i mean we are all all of us as Ghanaians did not like sprints. When was the last time any Ghanaian say said, "Oh, let me watch hundred meters and see if Ghana will do well"? No, it was <laughs> it was after, only after Zachary. Yeah, nobody Zachary. did again. Yeah, <laughs> as is as is Zachary, and as is Zachary retired in two thousand and and five or two thousand and four. <laughs> that was long ago. So if you are you falling in love with sprints now again, it's because of Joseph Paul Amoa and Benjamin Azamati. So. I mean, it didn't go well for, for Azamati at this uh, African Games, but I don't think that, you know, all the berating was 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 important. But then that's why I like what he said after that. You know, he's also a football fan, and when the Black Stars don't win, he's also very angry. So he understands that, you know, people would be angry, which 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 is right. But I just don't feel like, you know, people need to pass certain comments they were passing about him. The thing is, he's the reason why you love sprints again. And I feel like now... What Azamati has done for a younger generation is that he has been able to inspire younger people who are coming through to also do better than what he is that he has done. Just to put Azamati's um, immense contribution into perspective, the athletic the athletics team now is um, kit, is catered by um, is catered by ASICs, right? And Azamati signed an ASICs contract somewhere last year, early last year. So, if A6 is sponsoring Ghana now, tell me that Azamati has not had an influence in A6 coming to say that let's start getting Ghana. You get what I mean? So, even on that front where um, logistically he has brought a world class brand to the Athletics Association for 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 them, or he has made the Athletics Association or Ghana in itself as as an athletic country um, got the the recognition he has given us in front of a huge sportswear brand like ASICS should be enough to know that he is also doing his part to make sure that athletics get better. Now, another thing is that the younger generation I was talking about, um, Azamati now has a, a national record in 100 meters of 9.90 seconds. The next person behind him is Joseph Polamwa, who has 9.94 seconds. Now, Joseph doesn't run 100 meters anymore. And so... Ideally, Azamati is going to hold that record for a really long time. But there's a younger generation coming through. That younger generation, I covered James Dazi at the Super Zonals in 2019, and he ran for Agri Memorial. And just last year, James Dazi broke our national 200-meter record. He ran 19.79. He's the only Ghanaian who has run below 20 seconds in 200 meters. And he just finished school four years ago or five years ago from like he just finished high school for five years ago and it's not just the james dazi there's another guy called isaac botio there's another called rashid saminu and then there's grace obo now the fascinating thing about grace obo is that grace obo was um she was a te- uh, she was a teenager 
and she was a secondary school student in 2019. And I saw her at the Super Zonals in Kumase. She won 100 meters and 200 meters. And then she won 400 meters in Kumase at the Super Zonals. Now, in that same year, we took Grace Obo to the African Games and she won 400 meter bronze. Someone from high school, you understand? So it just tells you that talent wise, there's a pool where we can pick from. And all of these people have decided to make athletics a profession because they have someone now that they can look up to in Benjamin and someone now they can look up to in, in Joseph Paul because these are the two guys who are kind of like spearheading what athletics is now and all of these guys are coming through. So I feel like in a way we need to make them the face of wherever we want to get to, especially in sprints and you know, to make sure that they are inspiring a younger generation, more and more young people will come in and try to run. Now, me, my own is that I need more more children from from Red Church, Christ the King, Morningstar, and all to also start running, because we've left the running to we've left the running to the people in Kumase, and you know they are just the ones producing some of the best runners. I know that in Accra, some talents is also here, so. The airport schools association and things. You guys should start organizing sporting competitions so that, and these schools, so that we their can parents are not them. letting them follow their dreams. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and, and that's what I'm saying. That with with people like Azamati now showing that you know you can actually do this as a profession, um, I'm, I'm thinking that you know more and more young people can also join. And also with the boxing, it was important that these guys won all the gold medals that they won. Now. Um, the government can pay a bit more attention to the boxers, knowing that these guys are training without a lot of things, uh, without a lot of very good um, equipment, but they are still churning out the results, which is very, very important. So um, I think that talent-wise, we've never had a problem with talent, but it's just how we can streamline all the talents into one pool and then just kind of like move everybody on with it. And that's what we need to be doing. For athletics, in a way, they've been able to source themselves out with how they do the whole integration process. Because usually, you can see a progression from high school into university, and then usually they fly them into the United States to uh, go to school there and train there because they have the, the, the better facilities. And then they can also come in and, and, and do what they can. Another one is the, the guy who ran the 10,000 meters, William Amposa. He... He, he was also a student at in Swedro. He left Swedro, went to uh, University of Education, Winneba, and then he went to the United States just last year. And he won everything in, in his state before coming for the African Games. And so I think that in a way, these talents can all be managed properly if we just keep an eye on these people. I think that usually what the athletes really, really need is giving them what they need, which is like... The, the monetary assistance, and then also putting them under the right, you know, uh, putting them under the right coaches and then the right training regimen that can keep them going. We need to motivate these guys because I think that in many ways they are doing really, really good. And it's the only way we can we can get the best out of them in the next three months when the Olympics comes, comes to, and then next year when the Commonwealth Games comes back, and then later on uh, in 2027 when the African Games returns. I think you mentioned something very important about the coaching. I think that's also one thing we really need to focus on because in all your since the last episode that you came in in this episode, one thing I've realized is that we have a lack of coaching um in various disciplines like top level coaching. So even if you are trying to be, reach the top, you probably have to go out and get someone from Russia or some foreign is either you have to get a foreign coach to come here or you have to go somewhere to get that type of coaching. So I don't know what we need to do to get to that level. But no, as for, the, as for the coaching there, Smiley, I'm telling you, it's very, very important. The two guys, the the the, the high jump um, men, the guy who won the high jump and then the lady who won the high jump, they all they, they came with the coach. So the guy was actually white and he was the one coaching them you know, um, from the top there and then they won't go for us. And so I think that if we are able to, you know, put this or give the, give out this knowledge into um, coaches here in Ghana who can know the right things to do with these athletes and also with the nutrition and all of that, 
now that we may not be able to afford a nutritionist, I think that we need to give the coaches some basic knowledge about nutrition so that they can teach these athletes and then get them to perform better. Because um, Azamati came with his coach. The only thing was that Azamati's coach is... Um, so Azamati's coach in, in the University of Ghana when he was here is the same one who went to the United States with him. I mean, when he went to the United States, he had a coach. But, but the, his coach here also went there to assist. You understand? So when he was coming for the African Games, he came with the Ghanaian coach. And so he knew him better than you know, all the other guys. You understand? The, the rest of them, I think a few other guys also came with their own coaches. And it's the reason why you know, we saw a marked improvement. But I think that if all of these guys are, um, you know, all of these guys come together and decide to train local coaches and, and invest in them and make sure that they are doing uh, their best for, for the country, I think that we can have also a bit more talents. Because look, the high jump that we've just, we've just done, there's a boy in Kumasi who at the just ended Super Zonals, he jumped the height of 2.06 meters. And this is a secondary school boy. You understand? Oh. If if we give him the adequate training, in the next three, four years, he could be something else. And he would need the coaching from here if he doesn't get an opportunity to go to the US or anywhere else. And and so, yeah, I think that is very, very important. Actually, Corey, any inputs? Because we don't really hear from you today. Um, Corey, be quiet. To be while. honest, <laughs> to be honest I've, I've, I've been listening to what you guys have been saying. I've... I've and there's not much to add onto it. I think Kawawa has tackled it quite effectively. The only thing I would I would m maybe want to add is is it's just a plea. It's, it's literally just a plea to be better. There's there's it's there. It's it's literally in front of all of us. We can see the path to to different levels of greatness. We we already have the talents that are are. Just scratching on the surface of 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 greatness, they can achieve a lot more with just dedication to to them and just a little help. Because what they are achieving now without any of this help is 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 amazing. <laughs> like if you're telling me high school students are jumping two point zero six meters at this stage, dude. Imagine if they had a proper arena to train in, uh, uh, the proper new nutrition. They could they, they could take our, our like our names very very far. You could have Nike come in and want to sponsor these people. Nike wants to sponsor these people. Will also trickle down to the youth, the 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 younger ones. It's 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 such a motivating factor, and it all stems from just doing better. It, it the thing that pains me is that it's not for a lack of funds. They are they are they are there. It's just somebody just needs to stop taking the funds that are meant for for these things i mean if you look at how the games were all, 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 all organized when it started we were all on them oh this is pathetic this is poor this is this this is this it took dstv until four days be before the end of the tournament to finally start broadcasting this this was all african games in it. like it's such a major tournament if it was olympics they would have run to it but it took the it, it, the last four days that's when we saw it if you saw the coverage G, gtv was was Giving, dude, you could you could barely. I don't know whether it was my connection or or, or <laughs> what my antenna not they faced the right direction or what, but it was it was horrendous. But when you watched it on DSTV, you're like, Oof, I didn't see the, the quality. And so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying that I really wish and plead that can we stop with the with the half half assing. Of, of things just to get by and really invest in, in these in these guys. We all saw where some of these boxers were, were sleeping or resting before bouts. I mean, it's not fair. It's not fair. Like these guys have dedicated their lives to to, to this thing. They are they are they are on it, training night and day, eating kumi and 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 like poor poor nutrition. We just have to invest in them. And you can see that with just a little investment, you can see how far they have gone. And this is even with no no investment. If you look at if you look at the coaching, as Kawao was was saying, all we have to do 
there, there are people that have trained and have done it better. Bring them down to train the guys that are here. We, 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 when I was doing the um, football a, 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 a academy thing, we had a coach from Netherlands, Sasha, something, something, something. His name was Sasha. The guy came down. He trained our local coaches for half a year. He was here living with them in Kissiman. Like he was on the ground, bro. He then brought, he, the Sasha, then invited another five coaches from teams that he had scouted for in, in the Netherlands to come and do a whole coaching seminar with these guys on the field, with actual players. He's teaching them, you have to let them go here. This is how you set up the codes. Bro, by the time they left, you could see a categorical improvement in the coaches. And that was for, like, a, the coaching seminar was like a two-week thing. So imagine if these guys actually had a one-year training program. And some of the cost involved is really high. And some of them can't afford it. Like, it's, it's really high. So that is where I say the support of these uh, associations and, and the uh, sports ministry can, can, can help them subsidize these things, reduce the cost for, for them. They'll still pay because they still want the licenses. They still want to improve themselves. So just help. That's all. That's all we need. Just a little bit of help. So that is that is my only contribution. Just a plea. Just can we just aim to be better at something? Like just pick one thing. If it's at, if it's a level, let's just pump, pump the money into it. Let's get that yep. to a certain level. When you yep. finish, you pick boxing. Pump money into it. And don't. What I'm saying is, I'm I'm just I'm even doing it in a small sense because they do have the money to do multiple things at once. Just pump money into them and let's see. How far we can we, we can get them? Let's let's stop this. Oh, oh, you just let this guy just go and do it, and, and let's see how far. No, let's pump money, invest, and we'll see we'll see the benefits. Because, dude, as Crack was saying, as that as that anthem is played, you feel it. it, it it's it, I don't know. look the woman that composed that anthem. Eh, it be spiritual <laughs> thing. It take do because that anthem. Eh, no matter. No matter who is in government, no matter who's on top, no, pa, 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 dude, it enters you. Yeah, yeah. And let you, me, and let you let feel me, that. Let me come like the that. And you feel you feel that 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 burst of patriotism. So it's just it's just a matter of pushing it. Just just push it a little bit more, and we'll see we'll see these guys reach our standing length. If you're talking about for Coaches, Charlie, right at the dollar be fourteen. You have to pay this. You are you are not paying these coaches Ghana cities. If the families, uh, Abeku Jackson in Poppy, then says no, if he finance in, in coaches, how do you think he's, he's going to reach that level? But they've seen that the boy has talent. Let's push. Let, 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 let's push money into him. If they had the coaches here, they wouldn't go and look for it out, uh, outside. So let's. That's my only plea, man. I just want us to be better. Speaking of being better. Um, during the internet blackout, some of the people be they managed sneaking some very major announcements. I don't know whether they shut out or did they send them, make them go cut the cables or something. <laughs> but I think on the second day of the internet blackout, the GFA announced that Otuado has been reappointed as Black Stars manager. Me, because of the internet blackout, I see that announcement like two days after self after the announcement. <laughs> so. <laughs> Whatever I don't know what was going on online for the Airtel Tigo users because they are the ones who saw it. I don't know what the reaction ah, the was. Four guys, the four guys on the, <laughs> the Airtel, four Airtel Tigo, Tigo that were tweeting. That I, I don't know what was going on, but yeah, they managed to sneak in that announcement when nobody was online. Nobody was able to give any feedback, any outrage or whatever opinion people had couldn't be shared. Um, again, we can start with Kawa. How did we get here? Uh, <laughs> uh, the GFA, Black Stars. It is these days. It's a topic I don't. I don't like to talk about because um, I mean, uh, I am. I'm very. <clears throat> I'm very tired. To be honest, like I'm very tired. Issues around the Black Stars is is very. Uh, you know, the moment you draining you, you the, it's draining. Yeah, exactly. The moment you you try to speak about it, you know, people decide that oh, 
they are not going to talk to you again or they are going to start fighting you because you are fighting an establishment. But I think that usually it's really just us like wanting the team to do better. Because <clears throat> if you've come in and and every coach you've, you've, you've actually brought in has not done anything, then it becomes difficult when the person you just let out of the door, you, you go back to the person. It's, it's quite strange for me. And I mean... Oh, Chris, he's uh, in his legs. Sorry? I said Chris Houston is next after all. To add, like we're going back to Chris Houston too. He's it's, it's just it's, it's a it's a it's a cube. No, as for as for as for as for Chris Houston, I, I don't think he would ever come back because, especially with this FA in charge, I don't think he would he would never come back. But um, Otuado, I think that number one, the FA didn't want him to go the first time, and um, that was the that's that's like the major thing. The FA didn't want Otuado to go the first time. And so after he left and then they had to work with Chris Hutton, you know, they were really just bidding their time. What I do not like though is that after the sacking of Chris Hutton, uh, if you knew you were going to bring back Otoado, you should have just said that after Hutton, we are bringing back Otoado. That whole idea of telling us that, oh, we want a coach who has 15 years experience and we want a coach who has winner. that. Exactly. <laughs> like all of that was you like, what was that for? one box. Yeah, exactly. So I keep, I keep asking Wait, myself, like, what was Kawawa, that for? Yeah, I have a question. Because I swear there was a committee that were were hired to pick Thank this you. new coach. Yes, which had some bankers yes. and things on, they on gave it. Them uh, specific um, and then, criteria and then for this, the coach. And then, and then at the end of the day, this same committee brings back the guy that we already know that the FA liked anyway. You understand? So what was all of that for? And that's what sometimes I don't understand. Because why can't you just go forward with what you want to do unless you do a whole fanfare around it before you decide to announce it? But yeah, I mean, if if Otuado has been brought in to uh, change things drastically, I think that he's the wrong person that they've, they've brought in. Um, his first game against Nigeria, I saw it. There were a few good signs because now we are playing you know, marginally better than we're playing under Chris Hutton. Uh, even after one game, you can spot that there are a few progressive signs. But the thing is, what do Ghanaians want? A lot of Ghanaians have been frustrated about how the Black Stars have played. If you've gone for, if you've won one Afghan game in the last 11, and you're bringing in a coach who we need, like, in, 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 because the whole thing about Otuado is that we need to give him time to perform. Right, and if you've won just one Afghan game in the last eleven, how are you asking me to be patient with someone who has come in? The Afghan is next year. The World Cup is in two years. Is Otuado going to qualify us to the World Cup? Is Otuado going to take us to the semi-final of the Afghan? You know, these are things that we need to ask. And so, if if the FA is bringing him in as someone who is going to be um, staying on for like a really long time, say two years, three years, four years, regardless of whatever the results are, we are still going to stick with him, then that's fine. But if we are going to do that thing where if he doesn't, oh, if you don't go to the final of Afcon, we are sacking you, or if you don't qualify Ghana to, if that's what we are doing, then auto, the auto, the auto choice makes no sense. You understand? So it depends on what the FA wants. Me, I am, as a fan of the Black Stars, to be very honest with you, I don't think we can win Afcon in the next four years. So if we can't win Afcon in the next four years, the, the major thing that could come is the World Cup. Can we, win, can we go to the World Cup in America? We must be able to because now it has been expanded to nine African countries. If we are not able to, then that's also another problem. So Otoado's issue is very dicey for me. I mean, if I was Otoado, I don't think that I would have accepted to coach the Black Stars at this point. But, Charlie, it is, it is him, and, and he knows what he can do. So, fingers crossed. Let's just see how it's going to go for him. I mean, me, till now, I'm still struggling to process that appointment because it's like, first of all, I think we might have a problem with or an addiction to Sankofa because how many managers is it now that we've sacked and brought back Okay, Milo, the first time, I don't think we sacked him, but we brought him back. 
Kwesi yeah. Apia has gone and come back to. Yeah. We seem to have a problem and, with and moving see, on. See, that's that's another thing about Ghana that sometimes it hurts me because if if you follow trends over the 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 black stars over the last few years and you see that second comings have not particularly gone well for any black stars manager. It started in 2003. In 1992, we took um we took a coach to the Afcon, and you know after Ghana won the Afcon in 1982 we only went to the next one in 84 from 1984 we didn't qualify for afcon until 1992 and when we qualified for 1992 we just went from qualification straight to the final and it was because we had a coach who was like really good we took that coach to the afcon uh, in 92 we got to the final after that after that uh, afcon final whatever a year later, he was sacked, right? Now, after 10 years, after 10 whole years in 2003, when we were looking for another manager, we went and, and said, Caesar. oh, Buka Caesar, come back and come and coach Black Stars. He came back and the Black Stars couldn't qualify for the 2004 AFCON because, because he was so poor. So the issue about the Black Stars, second comments have not particularly worked. So I'm just looking at Otoado and saying that this is a huge task that you've taken up on yourself because if, if if I've seen the last three managers who have made a second coming for the Black Stars not work, how do you think it's going to work for you? And and these these three managers who who were coaches of the Black Stars and left were actually quite successful managers for the Black Stars. Bukasiza took um, Ghana to the final of the AFCON in 92. We only lost on penalties. Um, Milo Van Riva took Ghana to the quarterfinal of the World Cup. He took us to the final of the AFCON in 2010, where we lost. Um, Kusiapia took us to the semi-final of the AFCON. He took us to the World Cup. And Otoado got us out of the World Cup in the group stages. And this guy has come <laughs> back thinking that he can do better than what he did. So I'm actually very baffled about his decision to come back. But like I said, I'm just hoping to see that, you know, whether it works out. Because it has to work. If it doesn't work, then it means that all the choices of this football association, this current administration of football association leaders, have have made the worst choices of football coaches for the Black Stars in our in our entire lifetime. That's that's just what it means. And so and so Otuado just has to get it right for the sake of get get a great coach. I mean, even for his own sake, because looking at it, you have new manager starting out. You've already underwhelmed at the Black Stars once. You are coming again. If you fail twice at the same job, it could be a potential career killer because I don't see who is going to take a gamble on you again after this. Because yep. even now, I mean, for me, one of the things that I look at when you are going to hire a manager, sometimes it's just common sense. You just have to ask yourself, would any of your rivals hire this person? It's as simple as that. Like, would any yep. of your rivals hire this person? If your rivals wouldn't hire this person, then you should know that the choice you're making is purely emotional. Yeah? It's not following any particular logic. So for Otoaro himself, he he has to make sure that he he's, he man, he makes it at all costs because how his career will recover from failing twice at the Black Stars, I, I just don't know. Because it's not like the others, the other coaches he won't like make it. Kwesi Apia and the rest who... <laughs> you have a, it's not like the other coaches like Kwesi Apia and the rest who have like some connection to Ghana local football. Him, he be diaspora boy. So it's not like we see a player who you can feel you can get Kotoko and those other local clubs to manage. Like, I think it's either Black Stars or Smiley. nothing for him. That's Smiley, the how alternative I see. was John Pencil and uh, uh, Fatal Dada or whatever. It, I even forget it, about it, all those that, other ones. That was the alternative. You know, so the, the, the assistants. Old. I, I thought they were the current the current coaches of no they are Otoado's no, assistants. No, 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 they are assistants. <laughs> this be what you do no. copy me no me, example, me I know I I know go lie you I was pretty much disappointed in Otoado because and I was pretty much disappointed in GFE because this guy said when after his first stint he said he doesn't see his future in Ghana. He doesn't see his, he and his family's future in Ghana when he was going back to Dortmund. How do we go back and go and 
take him back and we act as if everything is gone back. Like, up till now, we don't know what went wrong um, in the last um, AFCON. We don't know. Like, there's been no report so far. Demonstrations were held. These people said they would hold meeting with the journalists, blah, 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 whatever. Committee to investigate. Committee. You set up a committee to get a new coach and you run it back with Otuado. What did you do? John Pentel. The guy has coaching license issues. You've gone for him. Fatal Dauda. As a keeper's trainer from Olili, where are you going from here? Like, my internet has been fucking up, but I'm, I'm happy this, it came at this time uh, because I'm really passionate about Because look, all African games took our, took our attention and we, we were really focused on a friendly against Nigeria. Do these people know that gradually Ghanaians are uh, getting to a point where that love you know that they say bring back? No, it's never coming back. <laughs> Do they know that? Mm-hmm. I saw a post recently where Mbappe was talking about why um, players shouldn't be paid. They shouldn't be paid. I don't yep. fully, I don't countries. fully agree with that, right? Because different economic reasons, and the player saying this, you no, know, is good for life. This part of the world, some players, that's the highest money they could ever earn. But my problem is then they take build houses so. But my problem is what we pay them is too much. It should be revised. It's too much. You are paying me and giving me bonuses as well. Why won't you just make the motivation factor bonuses? Like the way they made it for South Africa. Go and win the tournament, take the money. Why should we do it match by match basis? And qualification qualification bonus. Winning bonus. Why? Do you get it? Like, why? Like, we are really wasting money. And that's the that's an avenue for our leaders to, to steal money. Because the players are taking this, and we have people on the committee justifying taking hundred thousand dollars each for doing two days' work, three days work. We don't care about the blacks. Look at the black meteors, right? They were camped. They were worked on. Black princesses, they were camped. They were worked on. Pram Pram is still there. We chop FIFA money from Nyantechi. They've still not done Pram Pram. It's still there. Instead of saying they go fix some, use some as <laughs> a, 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 a football college for people. It's still there. Why can't we fix Bla- Bro, Pram Pram for Black Stars? Why can't we fix Pram Pram for Black Stars to go and sleep there when, <laughs> when we have. Friendly matches here. Crack. But they want to go and camp in Crack. South Africa when you're going to play in the hot weather in <laughs> Ivory Coast. Correct. Do, do, do you know something that pains me the most about this thing? Have you seen St. James's? St. George's? <laughs> when when in England in England are, are, are arriving for, for Thank for you, friendly. bro. Thank bro. you. Bro, that that infrastructure is is sublime. And, and it's I'm, not about that the money doesn't exist here. Our budget we is bigger than England. Our budget, our budget, is, our is, budget is, is bigger than, than England. Dude, even the St. George's crowd, because it be Western world, I know even won't go far. Look at what Egypt and Morocco have been able to build for themselves oh. using FIFA Thank money. Thank you. Thank it's, you. Is it just Mauritania? Look, let's not let's not even focus on uh, the North African countries, right? Let's come. Let's come to the east and like let's come, let's come down. Let's not even focus on the West African countries. Recently, they went to um, was it is it one of these countries? I forgot it. Was it Zambia or something like that? Like I forgot it, one of them. They've actually built a place for the players to stay. Like I I I think Isn't I've, that the Mauritania that Kawa is talking about? Yeah, aside about. Mauritania, there was I remember during the Afcon. Yeah, not just Mauritania, another Another country that had done that. I forgot it. Another country had done that. Like, um, they went to camp there. Another country went to camp in that African country. And they were praising them like, oh, wow. They have, they've actually built a place where you stay. There's a training pitch there. Everything there. You are at one place. I think, uh, was it Algeria or something went to play friendly there? Algeria, one of the, 
like North African countries like when they you you want to go and train in South Africa when South Africa said wasn't training in their own country because they are playing they are playing in the hot weather. You you wanted to go to South Africa. <laughs> like you know, there's like so much wrong with black stars that I don't think it's ever ever gonna work under this administration. I don't know which administration will come next, but the precedent set by all of them, it's not. I mean, I've always said that if you've been close to football, like the way most of us have been, you will understand how these people have failed us and why they can still do more and still chop. I am not saying don't chop, but you can do your job and chop. We are here. Yeah, I'm saying don't chop. Oh, it will be hard. Corey, because let me tell you something. I always say that like, Everybody's corrupt. Every country is corrupt, right? Every country is corrupt. But then again, it's the loss of the land. It's the leaders that put things in place that makes them less corrupt. And we compare ourselves to them. Where there are no laws, where there are no references, the citizens in Gaza, they are shit human beings. We talk about Russians, Chinese. Who will be more corrupt than, than Chinese? If you even deal, you get a chance to deal with Chinese. You understand? Integrity is zero. Corruption, 100. But they are progressing in their country because their leaders are put in place. Oh, we are not That's all I'm saying. Like, people say you we are a representation of our leaders. No, that is wrong. Bro. No, no, uh, our leaders are a representation. Of our, that is all. We are the representation of our leaders. Because you people are teaching us that you are not serious and this is the way. Why do you want me to hold integrity when you are not even doing that? Why should I hold myself accountable when you are not even holding me as a citizen accountable? I also look for my personal interest. I also look for what's best for me. But then again, the black stars here never go be. And with that, we've come to the end of this episode. Um, if you haven't done this already, please subscribe to us on the different um, podcasting platforms. We're on Apple, Spotify, um, Amazon, wherever you can find podcasts, we are there. We are also on YouTube. In case you are watching, you can see that, yes, we are on YouTube. I beg. Please watch, subscribe, and like just to help us. Um, Them likes, the, bro. Yeah, for the algorithm to recommend us to more people. The liking is very important. We are liking the views that people are giving us, but like like the videos too. Make, make we take spread them. And then follow us on our different social media pages. On Twitter and Instagram, it's ATW Podcast GCR. On TikTok, it's After the Whistle. So, yeah, um, Charlie, how are, first of all, thank you very much for joining oh, us. Charlie, this I one because I, Charlie, last yeah. thing, last thing, last thing. Yeah. Uh, I beg, I know pay my DSTV for a very long time because <laughs> United know the force. We, right now, I hear <laughs> see. The enormous or what what people won't bring guys out gates. I will so so left the team for me. I will left the team. If if the STV wants them money, make them go tell the enormous people say the guys out gates. No, we don't like. You won't give. 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 You I blast the hacks and so right now I need to feed them self coffee <laughs> or water hack because of Southgate. I don't want right. any of them. I don't want any of them. <laughs> Corey did a crazy go have to use it. Bro, when I saw that guy Southgate leak, I was just like, this is exactly what I need in my life right now. <laughs> Gary Southgate at the helm of United. Just run them further down. Oh. I want you people to be playing on the same level as Chelsea. Like battling for 10, 11, 10, 11. No. They're suffering. See, we suffer already. How do you watch South Gate? People have not even suffered anywhere, look, anywhere I, close to what South Africa is suffering. People for suffering. How do you watch South Gate versus Brazil and say you want South Gate? Like how? Brother. Yeah. You know, we can <laughs> put out bonus. We can put out bonus episode this week. Take this cast this matter. But yeah, we've come to the end of the episode. Charlie, guys, thank you very much for joining us on this one. And as always, ATW dominates the conversation.